So the first thing is expertise. And I'm going to suggest that you be as specific as you can. So if you are a marketing person, and I see lots of marketing folks or real estate people or whatever that they're doing, be specific about what are your specialties in marketing. What are those things? So Andrew, you're at Sacred Heart. It's a great opportunity in your profile to talk about specifically those, the passion you have about marketing, what you've learned, even, even as a student, what you've learned, where you're headed, you know, all of that's important. Be specific. Okay, and your personal qualities. So this is where people get surprised. I'm not suggesting that you go on the home feed of LinkedIn and you share your dog, or your what you ate, or the party. I don't believe in any. I don't like any of that stuff. That's not for LinkedIn. That is really for Facebook. But on your profile, a little element of your of who you are as a person. That's that's very important. Recruiters have said they want to see a little personality. Buyers, you know, buyers today, they're going and checking people online. And they, they don't want to just, just get a, a marketing person like everybody else. They want to know a little bit about you, right? So all that now is important in how you do that on your profile. Many of the companies I work with, they've recognized that their employees have their own personal brand, but the company has a brand. So how do you, how do you mesh that? And What's really important is to make sure, because each, empl each employee that's online, they are representing the company. And in the old days when people started with, old days, if you go back 10 years, employees were just on LinkedIn and they were there saying that they work at such and such a company. And, and now what we're finding is a lot of companies, they, my company goes in and trains the employees. And so we take a look at what is the company brand, what's important for that company, and then how do we mesh that and bring those images and the language to those profiles? And guess what? The employees are delighted to do that exercise because they want to know how to describe. They, they're, many of them are confused. How do I describe the company that I work at? Seriously, right? That's, that's kind of how they think. So we, we work on banners. We work on videos and giving them the language. But then they also say, well, what's, what is special about not just where I work, but what I do here and what, what I bring to the table. And so they, they, they bring that together. So we do that with HR and with sales, typically. But it's a big, it's a big trend. Um, and you can be a brand ambassador for where you work and also be thoughtful about your own personal brand and what you do. And if you have your own small business, you've got to think about the same thing. What's, what's the company brand? And do I use a company page? And what's my personal brand? right? And when you post things, you have to think, what am I, how am I going to try to make that work? How many people have a company page in their business? You do? OK. All right. A lot of you do. All right. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Thinking that through? And that's the question I get. Should I have a company page or should I have a, just a personal page? And it really depends on what you're trying to, what you're trying to accomplish. All right. So I'm a believer that, and I've had just had a conversation here with Craig a minute ago about the different philosophies and there are different philosophies about how you approach LinkedIn. And I'm of the philosophy that you want your profile to be memorable more than anything else. Um, you certainly want to be found. You want, you want people to find you. So you want to have the right um, optimization of your profile, meaning you want it to be complete. And you want to do all the right things. But you want it when they get to your page, because most of the people that are going to come to your page <laughs> are going to be they, refer, they, they met you, say, say we met. I might look at your pr profile. You'd look at my profile, or we went and did an interview, right? That's how it happens. Um, so you want to really be able to impress or make an impression before that meeting or interview or after. And so you want that page to be memorable. And one of the best ways to do that is with your summary. So it, of course, the whole profile it all works together in a beautiful way. And there's all these sections. For those of you that have been on LinkedIn for years, um, some of you have probably been on as long like, like I have and might not even realize, but in 2013 and 2014, they added a lot of new sections. So if some of us who've been on since 2005 or 6 or 7 might not even be aware of all the new sections and, and all the new things that you can do. But um, I love the idea of using the summary as how you can kind of bring your whole, the whole story together, your, your visuals, your experience, 
you know, the whole, the whole thing, your pers the personal part of you that's important and the professional part. And so one of the things I found is that my clients had the hardest time with a summary. How do I write about myself? Remember I told you they were concerned. I don't want to sound like I'm promoting myself. And how do I, what do I say? So what I came up with were these personas to sort of help you think about how you're going to write about yourself. And I have, with each one of these personas is in my book with examples of real summaries. Let me ask the audience here, how many people are uh, actively sharing content? OK. So that's, that's good. That's, that's good. I mean, with a marketing group, I would, that's, you know, I'd imagine you guys would be pretty much on that. It seemed like about half of you were doing that. You know, one of the things that surprises me is with the companies that I work with, um, the, a lot of the marketing departments, they'll send the content out to the employees. They'll actually send it out where all you have to do is click it. Say, here it is, and just click it, and it sends it, puts it on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. The, the company does it all for them. But the employees are still because I work with these employees and they still are nervous about doing it because they haven't done it before and they, they, they're, so I want to just tell you if your company is sending you that kind of stuff, it's usually pretty good and you can click on it um, and get a, get a sense of what it's going to look like before you even post it. So don't be, af people are afraid of it. Um, but I also find in, in my survey that people, so many, and I can't remember the percentage, but it was a pretty high percentage of people that are not sharing content that want to. So you have a choice of sending it from what your company sends you, or you, when you're reading an article in a magazine, whether it's a Forbes article or wherever, what Inc. magazine, wherever, wherever you are, they, they, pretty much all of the magazines will show a share button, and you can easily do that. And that's also going to represent your brand. Um, so sharing content is pretty big. Publishing articles is a huge thing that came out. Now that rolled out pretty slowly. I would say it was around 2014. And this is huge, huge. So you can now publish for free, you know, have your own blogging site, really. And I know so many people that have, um, they blog elsewhere, and they have to make the decision, do I stay blogging, you know, on this site, where at my website or whatever, or do I start blogging on LinkedIn? And you have to really analyze where are you blogging now, because if you're blogging somewhere where there's not a lot of traffic, Usually you're going to do better on LinkedIn for, mo for most sites because you're gonna, you're, you're co your network is being notified. Have you seen the things where it says someone has written a post? You get the little notification, the little red notification. Those are the blog posts. So, um, and, and, and it's all find searchable by Google. So the, the article that you write has very high authority on Google because it's on LinkedIn versus your website. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, I have a whole chapter in the book on the publishing, and I have an example of a client who is a local guy, and I want to tell you about him because he did such a great job on publishing. His name is Felix Giannani, and he's in the alarm business in Trumbull. And I got him to start publishing, and remember, he's not writing about how great the alarms are, how great his company is. He's writing thought leadership pieces about security. If you look at his posts, you'll be very impressed how to protect senior citizens, how to protect places of worship. You know, things that are um, thought leadership, like how do you, you know, what's important in security, what's happening at this conference, I mean, things that are not about his product. And he was posting, I have all the stats in the book, but he posted all last year, and he got a lot of new business from that. In fact, one of, the, one of his, um, he got a big client that ordered, uh, let me, he got all these alarms, uh, commercial alarm business uh, deals from his publishing, and he got, made all these has all these followers, and it was all from the publishing. So um, you can do it, especially if you're in marketing, right? Is that a little incentive? This is a question I asked in my survey: How much time do people spend working on their profile? And I found, and you know, think about as professionals. It's, things are always changing, right? You want to keep it up to date. You're, you know, what's happening now and next month, it's always changing. You want to be thinking about yourself and where do you fit and how, do you, how are you going to best attract your clients. Um, but majority of people spend, as you can see, under five hours. Many of them were like one or two hours per year working on their profile, which is not a lot. 
So if you compare that to your vacation planning, <laughs> how much time do you spend planning your vacation? Right? So you're, and, and, you're, and I feel like it's the same kind of question you'd ask about your network, like how much time do you spend you know, really making your network valuable and being valuable to your network so that you're, you know, it's the, you're valuable to your network and then it all comes back. Think about how much time you spend there versus your vacation. Because all that, to me, your business is all about your brand and your network. That's it. Your career, your brand, and your network. That's what it is. So, um, and especially, all right, when you think about how much time you're spending, you say, all right, this is what's going on. There's 45 million views per day. The deal about LinkedIn, there's a lot of stuff happening, but the number one thing that people are doing is looking at profiles. If you're selling, you're recruiting, you're doing a job search, it's, that's the number one, for all of us, the number one activity is looking at profiles. So I say to you, take, it, take your time and think about it before you just load it up. Think about who you are. What is it that's unique about you as a professional? And how can you really, I mean, I gave you some kind of big examples, but you know what I mean. It's really be specific about what value you have and what's unique about you professionally and personally. Use the right language the right images, and think about the thought leadership. It really works together. And that's how you bring it together to be that orange fish, to be that unique person that they're going to remember and they're going to want to work with. So I thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.